Configuring iSCSI Shared Storage for ESXi. Hey, this is Greg Shields with CBT Nuggets, and um, you're probably playing with your ESXi server right now. You've got the networking configured, but you're maybe trying to figure out how to connect up that network to some network-based storage that you have, uh, specifically some iSCSI-based storage. Well, as you can see here, I've got uh, esx1.company.pri. This is an ESXi server, version 5. And uh, I have here in the networking a VM kernel port, which is connecting this server up to its management network. This is the network that the vSphere client uses to talk to this ESXi server. I also have a standard switch down here that has a virtual machine port group. So for any virtual machines that may be on this server, those virtual machines are going to connect up using that second NIC. But what I don't have is a network or a network card that talks to my iSCSI based storage. Now I've already got that iSCSI storage. It's been provisioned, it's been exposed to the network and available to me. All I've got to do now is configure ESXi to well, connect up to that storage. Now one of the ways we can accomplish this, and there are many ways in which you can, starts here by clicking the Add Networking button. What we're going to do is create another VM kernel connection type. Now, as you can see down here, the VM kernel connection type is used for things like host management. In fact, we already have one that does that. It can also be used for vMotion or NFS, or in our case, iSCSI. So let's go ahead and create that VM kernel connection type here. And I'm going to create it with a separate switch, just to show you visually how these can be separated out. But you don't necessarily have to create your own isolated switch for this traffic if you don't want to. I'm going to give it a name. And if I need to, I can also give it a VLAN ID. Mm -hmm. Now, as you'll notice down here, there are three services that can be enabled for this switch, uh, vMotion, fault tolerance logging, and management traffic. Now, I'm not really interested in any of these because I want to isolate that iSCSI traffic down into its own physical adap adapter and its own VM kernel port. Now, if you've created your uh, virtual machines port group, you remember that you didn't actually have to create uh, a, an address for that port group. It's because each of the individual virtual machines will have their own address. But here, when I'm creating a VM kernel port, well, I have to have an endpoint so that I can connect up my server to my iSCSI storage. I know that in this network, I have the 192.168.0.203 net uh, or address available. And if I give it a 25 or 24 bit subnet mask here, and choose next and then finish, we'll see that we create a third switch that's for use by iSCSI. We're not done yet. What we have is the network connection, at least coming out of the ESXi server, but we haven't really done anything associated with iSCSI. In fact, one of the first things that we have to do is here under the storage adapters node, we have to click the add button here and actually add in the software iSCSI adapter. That software iSCSI adapter, as you can see up here, allows us to connect up one of those connections that we just created via VM kernel port out to one of the locations that may exist on our network. And in fact, if I choose properties here, you'll see that we have a number of different ways in which we can connect up that, that iSCSI initiator to our iSCSI target. The first step in this process actually happens here from the network configuration screen. And what I need to do is choose the Add button here and select the iSCSI vSwitch that we're going to connect up to our storage and choose OK. As you can see here, the port group policy is noted as being compliant, and so we should be good with actually completing that connection. I also want to connect it up to the location on the network where that storage exists. Now, I know that on this network, that storage exists at the endpoint 192.168.0.201. If I choose OK and just give it a minute or so, it should appear here as an iSCSI server location. If I've done every, everything correctly, over here in the, under static discovery, I should see the appropriate target name for that piece of storage that's been enabled for this computer. And in fact, I do here so I know that I've done everything correctly. Once I'm done, I have to rescan the host bus adapter so it makes uh, the server aware of this change. And as you can see down here, we've actually mounted that uh, remote piece of iSCSI storage here with the iSCSI software adapter. We're still not done yet, because up here under storage, there's one final piece that's required. If I choose Add Storage, what I'm going to do now is actually create more or less a volume on that storage that I've connected to using the steps up to this point. I'm going to choose a storage type of disk 1. And if, I, if I've done everything correctly, then I should see the name appear for the appropriate LUN that I want to connect up. Choose Next here again. I can choose a file system version and a disk layout. I'm just going to choose the defaults here. I can give it a data store name, which in this case will be VM1. And I can choose how I want to format it, just a piece of the storage or the entire storage. And 
clicking next and finish, that connects up this server. So now this server can make use of this piece of iSCSI storage. This storage is shared storage. And so the final step in this process will be to continue this exact same series of steps on all the other servers that need to talk to this storage in your ESXi host cluster. If you want to learn more about configuring ESXi and ESXi storage, check out my CBT Nuggets series at cbtnuggets.com. But until then, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.